Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here in the lobby of the AnyBots office, and I'm here with robot personality, Angela, who's going to tell us a little bit about what it takes to be a robot personality. Well, uh, first of all, we have to be able to speak clearly so you guys can hear us, and we all bring something different to the table. Um, we've been in retail environments, medical environments. Um, we've got some individuals. That just last week, I did a presentation at elementary school with a professor to a robotics club. I've also been a receptionist in um, several different offices. So there's so many different ways that you can apply or utilize the robot, um, and we're always looking for new ways. And I've got to say, uh, well, I, I certainly was expecting to see robots as soon as I got here. I, just, I wasn't necessarily expecting to be greeted by a robot when I walked in the door. But um, th there's something about uh, these antibots that just feels instantly comfortable, and I can't really put my finger on what that is. Well, I think the video helps a lot because you can see the facial expression and my reaction to what you're saying, and it's somewhat like having a natural conversation. Although you are staring at a robot, you can still see me live. So that gives us the presence as if we are there. And I think it's a little different than any other type of video chatting software or anything like that because we're mobile. We can move around with you, walk through the office, continue to have our conversation. So... Um, it, sometimes it takes people a little bit to get used to the robot, but for the most part, we've had some great reactions. The thing that I'm really impressed with is, okay, so it says here that you're in, in Fort Mill, South Carolina on, on, on the screen at the bottom. I assume that's, that's correct. And uh, I'm here in, in Mountain View, California, and there is essentially no lag. I mean, it, and I don't know, uh, the, I'll, I'll get into some of the technology stuff with the, the folks that are actually building the robots. But, I mean, is there no lag on your end as well? So this feels pretty natural? No, it's very clear and crisp. And uh, the movement, uh, you know, as you walk around, everything looks the same as if I were standing there. Um, there are, you know, portions throughout the office that maybe your connection will be a little lower, just like if you were walking around with maybe an iPhone or an iPad, you sort of, your connection may drop in certain areas. Well, the robot's going to do the same thing if we're riding around the streets of San Francisco or something. You know, eventually we're going to hit a little dead spot. But for the most part, uh, we, we tend to keep the connection up. And, you know, that's our biggest challenge is, is looking at the areas where the connections may be low and how to keep that streamlined. And so are there, uh, as a robot personality, are there, is, are there times where you feel that there are limitations in what you're able to communicate, or does this feel pretty natural most of the time? Well, the communication, I think, feels pretty natural. Every now and then when I want to pick something up, it's a little difficult because I have no arms. But um, we do have a mechanism that we can put on the door, and I, just a click of a button, I can open a door from my computer here on the East Coast. I can open a door there on the West Coast. So um, we can actually do a lot more than you would think we can do, but, and we're always striving to add new things that you know, can, can add to, and to be beneficial to having the robot. Yeah, I was just saying um, when we were it, it waiting in the other room that uh, I thought it would be interesting to have one of these. I travel frequently, and having one of these so that I could um, talk to my kids I think would be a lot of fun. Absolutely. After the um, presentation at the elementary school, there was a, a, a little boy there that said that his dad travels back and forth so often, and he, uh, he misses him, you know, during the week when he's off at business. He said it would be so great for him to kind of log in and be there at dinner and maybe go watch a show with him in the living room before he went to bed. So there's a lot of personal applications for the robots, um, as well as business. So you can kind of, you know, see where they would come into play for military families and things of that nature that are gone often. We also have some executives that have um, maybe have an office on the East Coast and an office on the West Coast. And instead of having to go fly back and forth, they can simply log into what we call the QB or the robot and visit their facility and ride through and speak with everyone. So you know, in the long run, it saves them some time and money. All right. Well, I'll, I'll wrap this up here. But thank you, Angela, for uh, giving us a little insight into what it's like to be a robot personality. Well, thank you.
This video has been brought to you by GoToManage. Try GoToManage free for 45 days by entering the code Perillo45.